open with is bullshit. So, no, 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 no. The, the title is called bullshit. Sorry. <laughs> Just <laughs> he called them bullshit. No. Um, and so he, uh, as I'm leaving the club, I'm hearing the vibration of of the kick drum, and it's the. It was the most life changing moment I ever had. Like I had to get out of the car and run back in the club to make sure I didn't hear what I like. Did I hear that? I mean, just the way that. Whereas this part is normal. It sounded like the kick drum was played by like a a drunk three year old, and I was like, "Are you allowed to do that?" So it's like. I was like, what the hell is that? So the next day in Atlanta, I'm asking him, I'm like, yo, what was that drunken song that y'all were playing? Like, what was that? Like, he's like, oh, yeah, it's bullshit. You know, it's produced by JD. And I was like, who was that? He's like, Q Tip's guy. And then suddenly they let me hear a beat tape, and I just never heard someone not give a fuck. And that to me was the most liberating moment. Like, oh, so all this pleasing my father, being perfect, I can now like now I gotta undo all the education and all the hours of preparation that I did. I gotta undo that. And it was hard to do. And then, you know, by the time that D'Angelo and I started the Voodoo record, which was like mid-96, um, that was the hardest thing ever because he constantly, like, he wanted me to drag the beat, but then he dragged the beat behind me. And so now I got to program my mind to think, okay, this is the metronome. And now he wants me to play. Which is, you know, I, I started having issues. Like, well, what if other drummers, like the musician community is going to laugh at me? And he's like, nah, man, trust me, like. Use the force. That's he used to use all these Star Wars analogies with me. Like, use the force, man. And I'd never seen Star Wars. So, well, then how? You know, if it if it, how many hours do you think, or how how long did it take to kind of undo? You know, your I, essentially your pre your entire life's training. I, I will say that it took from ninety six ninety six to ninety nine. Um, that was probably the most drumming that I've ever done in a studio setting. Um, so you're talking about spending months at Electric Lady Studios. Um, studio A was D'Angelo's studio. Uh, but because he's notoriously a night person, he he wouldn't even get to the studio till like 6 p.m. He His hours are like from 6 p.m. to 11 a.m. Um, so he would let Common, uh, do his work. We work with Common in the daytime. So to do like Water for Chocolate, uh, Common's album, we would start at like 10 in the morning, get done around six. If we had to do more stuff, then we go to the B room. So now Common has the B room, D'Angelo has the A room. And then in the C room, you know, it would be like accessory stuff. If I got to do Nick Acosta's record or Bilal's record or uh, Erica, her album, Most Quali, everyone would use the C4. So at one point, we just had that entire studio on lockdown and everybody was just going into each other's sessions right. doing stuff. And so just during that whole time period is how I managed to turn like into... There, there was one song called 
the, the the very first song we did for Voodoo was a song that didn't make the record. It was called Bitch. And um, 